Okay, so um, let's solve another example. This time I've made the diode actually reverse so that like you don't uh, you, you actually see something different from what we have seen before. Um, it might look a lot different, but then once we actually solve it, you will realize that it's actually uh, quite similar in terms of principles of op principles of solution. It's very very similar. 99% is similar to what we have done up to now. So I invite you all to actually try it yourself and then well resume the video and then see if you did it right or wrong. Um, again, uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to draw this plot. I'm going to have V in, V out. Okay, so let's see. Um, if I'm at negative infinity, it means that here is negative infinity. Let's say here is my ground, right? Here is negative infinity. Therefore, every other node in the circuit that is not ground or negative infinity is going to be somewhere between them, including this node. So I'm going to have a negative number here. But unlike before, this negative number means that oh well, my diode is actually on because the anode at this time is this side and the cathode is this side, right? But I'd like to actually start from the, the, the point that the diode is off because it made my circuit simpler. So what about if what if I start from positive infinity? So if I start from positive infinity, this point is going to have a positive voltage somewhere between zero and infinity. And if this is uh, and since the anode is actually connected to ground, it's zero. If I have a greater than zero voltage here, therefore my diode is off. Great. So I'm going to start from positive infinity. When I start from positive infinity, I see that my diode is off. And my, when my diode is off, it means that I have just this voltage source and this resistor. There's no current, there's no loop. Therefore, uh, there's no voltage across the resistor. Therefore, this node and this node are going to have uh, the same voltage. Therefore, V in is equal to V out. So coming down from positive infinity back to ground or back to zero, I know that I'm going to have this line with a slope of one. Okay. Now, how long this is going to continue? Well, whenever it's going to continue until I, I decrease my V in. So I know that, let me actually erase all this stuff. I know that here is zero and this diode is going to turn on. So diode D1 is off here. Okay. This diode is going to turn on when my this voltage my v out becomes negative vd on so that anode minus uh, anode minus uh, cathode voltage becomes vd on right v, remember vd on is that threshold voltage so i'm going to let's say if vd on is equal to let's say 0.7 volts I'm going to uh, basically until my, my voltage V in becomes negative 0.7 or not, not, uh, sorry, not V in, V out. Until V out becomes negative 0.7, uh, the diode is off, right? So since V in is equal to V out before the diode is on or when the diode is off, then it means that until V in is equal to negative 0.7, everything is the same. So until negative V D on, negative VD on, things are the same. And after that, well, my diode turns on. Once my diode turns on, this becomes a voltage source, right? Let me use a different color here. So the diode goes away and I'm gonna have a voltage source with this polarity positive on the bottom, right? What is the value of that voltage source? Vd on. So now since here is ground, this is going to V out is going to be negative Vd on. So below that negative Vd on, I'm going to have an output that is fixed. So this is similar to what we had before in one of other examples when the diode was the other way. And for that plot, if you remember, we had something like this, right? So like we had V in equal to V out for this regime and V1 was off. And when the D1 turns on, so here D1 is on. And this is the line that is separating the two sides. So when the diode turned on on this side, I had basically a constant voltage, uh, which was VD on, right? So when the diode is actually flipped, 
things are going to be flipped but the, you saw like the way i actually analyzed it it was exactly the same as before it's just that well negative polarity gives you negative voltage or negative uh, behavior in this case for this circuit analysis i'm just going to erase this because i don't want you guys to actually get confused that this is part of the solution okay okay let's solve another example i'm making these examples more and more complicated and well more and more interesting let's say um again we need to draw input output characteristics and let's start with wherever we start all the time so let's see if this is my plot v in and v out um which is the best way, best uh, point to start plus or minus infinity um well again i want you guys to actually think about it um try it as much as you can and then come back and watch the video right not just this last question that they asked about plus and minus infinity about the entire circuit okay so now which one is the better choice for starting well it the better choice is the choice that turns off the diode so that my circuit becomes very simple to analyze um if i connect negative infinity here i know that my diode is definitely on why because well the uh the cathode is basically my, my sorry uh, yeah the cathode is negative infinity so the anode is going to be some uh, voltage that is well definitely greater than negative infinity there's nothing smaller than that so there's a not that i cannot say definitely on but there's a very high chance that it's on right um how about positive infinity yeah for this one i can say it's definitely off because well there's no vol there is no voltage higher than positive infinity so this voltage whatever it is the voltage at the anode uh, or at point x or well in this case v out uh, the voltage here is whatever you call it is going to be less than positive infinity therefore d1 is off okay so i'm going to start from positive infinity so if d1 is off my circuit is going to look like a simple voltage divider right a resistive divider so i have a v in um let's draw it the way that you're more familiar with i have an r2 and i have an r1 to ground right um, we know this from circuits but it doesn't hurt reminding you whenever i have a bunch of grounds in the circuits the assumption is that they're all connected so uh, this circuit could be actually redrawn like oops let me actually draw it again could be redrawn like this okay so all the grounds everywhere are connected so uh, why don't i actually always connect them because well it's actually cleaner so if i have i don't know seven different ground points in the in my circuit it's nicer to actually have them connected to ground in their own local place rather than having so many wires connecting them together right so i have a resistive divider here therefore my v out is going to be equal to r1 uh, over r1 plus r2 times vn okay great so i know that uh my plot is going to look like something like this and the slope is r1 over r1 plus r2 great okay so when does things change well i know that because i know that uh, my d1 turns on if this node is bd on volts greater than this node right well i'm lucky that one of these nodes is v out and the other one is v in right so i can say that diode turns on when v out is greater than or let's say equal to v in plus vd on right so because it cannot get actually greater the moment it becomes it wants to become greater d1 turns on and it fixes the difference right at vd on right remember this plot so this is vn this is oh, i'm sorry this is uh, vd this is id okay so the voltage across the diode cannot be more than vd on that's why v out cannot be greater than vd v in plus vd on it it can only be equal 
Now, what is Vout? Before the diode turns on, I know that Vout and Vin have this relationship. So I can say that what I want in reality is that R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vin is equal to Vin plus Vd on. Again, to give you some numerical perspective into this, let's say that if R1 is equal to R2, and if, let's say, Vd on is equal to 0.7, what I really want, what I'm really saying is that I want half of Vin to be greater than Vin plus 0.7. But how is that possible? Like half of a voltage is equal to that voltage plus some positive number. Well, that is only possible, if you think about it, is when that voltage is negative. That's the only way that the half of a voltage, like for example, if the voltage is negative four, half of it is negative two. So negative two is actually more positive than negative four. So you can actually have this equation valid. But even without that kind of intuition, you could still solve this problem, right? So you could see that I can bring uh, V into the other side. So I'm gonna get R1 over, or like, let's say actually keep the V in, bring the other guy to the other side. So negative Vd on is equal to Vn minus R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. So negative Vd on is equal to um, R1 plus R2 minus R1 becomes R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. And then I do I take this fraction over there. So this is going to be basically Vn is equal to negative R1 plus R2 over R2 times Vd on. Okay, so like looking at these numbers, it's kind of saying that whenever Vn becomes uh, negative 2 times uh, 0.7, so negative 1.4 something like that. So when it becomes negative 1.4, you can imagine that, well, half of it, which is V out, is going to be negative 0.7. So I'm going to have a negative 0.7 here and a negative 1.4 here. Therefore, yeah, it makes sense that diet will turn on because this voltage is 0.7 volts more positive than this voltage. Okay. So this line continues until I reach V in equal to this value so let me see if I can fit this here so negative R1 plus R2 over R2 times Vd on and this negative is in the whole numerator so this is the voltage here okay so what happens after that well, after that, the diode turns on, and when D1 is on, something interesting happens. I have my V in, I have my resistors, but I do have another voltage source here instead of the diode, which is equal to Vd on, or that 0.7. R2, R1. Now, if this is V in, what would be V out? Well, looking at these, I know that I love my ideal voltage sources here because um, they actually make me needless of actually caring about these R1s and R2s because the voltage source between this node and this node tells me that V out is always equal to V in plus Vd on. So from that point forward, uh, v out is just basically, let's say Vd on is 0 0.7. V out is V in plus 0 0.7. Okay? So what does it mean for uh, the line? It means that, well, V out is equal to V in plus 0 0.7. It, it's a line with a slope of 1. So this is going to be how it looks like. Slope of 1, and it, it's going to cross the um, y-axis at 0 0.7 or at Vd on. Okay? So this is going to be uh, the answer for this example. I hope it was clear.